What is antimatter? Antimatter is a name given to a set of particles that are the antiparticles of ordinary matter. This means that they have the same mass as their matter counterparts, but with an opposite electrical charge. For example, the positron is an antiparticle you may have heard of, which can also be referred to as an anti-electron. It has the exact same mass as a regular electron, but with a relative charge of plus one, instead of minus one. The first prediction of antiparticles was made by Paul Dirac in 1928. This was confirmed when positrons were observed in 1932 by Carl D. Anderson. There are interpretations where antiparticles are in fact regular particles traveling back in time, and these are used in quantum field theory. When antiparticles collide with their regular counterparts, such as a proton with an antiproton, they annihilate each other, releasing vast amounts of energy which follows the relation E equals mc squared. This energy release has long been discussed as a source of power for humans. However, there is currently no cost-efficient and energy-efficient way of producing enough antimatter to harness the energy release during its annihilation. In a vacuum, virtual particle and antiparticle pairs are constantly popping in and out of existence, and this gives rise to vacuum energy. This vacuum energy has been used to try and provide an explanation for the cosmological constant that is driving the expansion of the universe, also known as dark energy. However, the predicted value of the cosmological constant from quantum vacuum energy is 10 to the 120 orders of magnitude larger than the measured value, which has been called the worst theoretical prediction in the history of physics. There is an observed asymmetry in the amount of ordinary matter and antimatter that we observe in the universe. Our world is comprised almost entirely of regular matter, such as protons and neutrons. Antimatter is not readily observed in the universe, however, it is produced in lots of high-energy particle interactions, such as the PP chain reactions that are involved in nuclear fusion in the cores of stars such as our own. Antimatter is also naturally produced in the decay of many radioactive isotopes. Antimatter can be artificially produced on Earth as well, although it requires extensive energy and cost to do so. The heaviest antimatter that has been produced on Earth is anti-helium nuclei, or anti-alpha particles as they can also be called. The observed asymmetry between the amount of ordinary matter that we observe compared to antimatter is known as baryon asymmetry, or the matter-antimatter asymmetry, and it, this is one of the largest unsolved problems in modern physics. During the Big Bang, an equal amount of matter and antimatter should have been produced according to our current theory of the standard model of particle physics. The matter and antimatter would have then annihilated each other, leaving no matter at all in the universe. However, we know that this is not the case, as evidenced by our very existence. Whatever the process was that led to baryonic asymmetry is known as baryogenesis, and there are several competing hypotheses as to what this process is. The hypotheses involve trying to propose processes that violate baryon number conservation, that is, processes that produce more baryons than antibaryons compared to the constituent components prior to the process. This would then explain how baryon symmetry could be broken. This imbalance must be exceptionally small, however, on the order of 1 in approximately 2 times 10 to the 9th power particles generated shortly after the Big Bang. The majority of the particle-antiparticle pairs would then annihilate, leaving the remaining particles, due to the imbalance, to make up the matter and the small quantities of antimatter that we observe in the universe today. You may be wondering where the figure of 1 in 2 times 10 to the 9th power particle is obtained from. This is by observing how much energy would be left over from the annihilation of all over the particles and feeding into the energy we see in the universe today. Namely, in this cosmic microwave background, such interactions are believed to have been observed in particle accelerators such as Fermion but the imbalance was much larger than the proper figure requires, where about 1% more matter than antimatter was generated. Also, the reason for the discrepancy between the observed and the predicted value is currently unexplained. Another possible explanation for Balloon asymmetry is that it does not exist. This could be explained by there being far away regions of the universe where antimatter dominance, such as all over the world universe, there is no asymmetry. In this proposed region, you could perhaps find antimatter galaxies, stars, and even planets. This explanation is thought to be unlikely, 
since the boundary between region of antimatter dominance and mass dominance would produce enormous amounts of the observable annihilation. And no such evidence of annihilation has been found anywhere in this cosmos. We hope that from this video, you have gained a better understanding of what antimatter is and the interaction it is involved in, as well as becoming aware of one of the great unsolved problems in physics, which is why we observe so much more matter in the universe than antimatter. And we hope that you have gotten an appreciation of some of the hypotheses as to what could cause such an imbalance.